What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Stronger, a.k.a. Isu the Guru, bringing you practical understanding of the metaphysical. All right, so check it out. Today, I'm talking about the seven stages of spiritual alchemy. Now, you've heard me talk before about the seven universal laws, the laws of the universe. Now, this is a deeper understanding of the laws but now it's a better way to interpret the laws. Okay. Now you're actually using them in the sense of trying to become a better person spiritually. Okay. You're really getting down to the nitty gritty of applying the laws. Okay. And we get into the seven stages of spiritual alchemy. So what's the purpose of this spiritual alchemy situation, right? So as you hear, I'm saying alchemy. Well, obviously we're, we're talking about alchemy, All right? Alchemy is like considered to be kind of like the next level above your basic understanding of the universal laws and law of attraction and things of that nature. When you get into spiritual alchemy, you're really talking about transforming your inner mind, transforming your inner self to a level that you probably didn't even see possible that you didn't even comprehend. You're really getting into the sciences when you start to go into this level of understanding and actually applying it and using it the best way for you. And that's the purpose of it is to apply it to where you can get the overall outcome, the overall outcome that you want to have in life. That is the reason for all of this is to obtain that dream that you want to obtain that lifestyle that you want. All right. That's the purpose for it. That's the purpose for all of it. OK. So yeah, this is the next level above the universal laws. All right, so now let's just speak on real quick. Let's just speak on alchemy. Let's get a, let's get a little brief understanding of what we're dealing with when we're, when we're talking about alchemy, okay? So the alchemist. The alchemist is one who transforms all energies in the higher frequencies of light and love. They are the bringers of a new dawn, transmuting the old paradigms into a higher intelligence and order. They act solely for the highest good of all. Love is the only master they answer to. Okay. Also, so dealing with alchemy is changing the frequency of thought altering the harmonics of matter and applying the element of love to create a desired result. Okay. Now, what is, what is all this really saying? Where are we going here? What are we really talking about? The reason that we're getting into spiritual alchemy is because it's to uncover the true path of who you are. Or I like to say, this is the true path of the hero, right? Or you could say the art of ascension. You know, moving through mentalism. And these are the really the steps of how to apply mentalism. Okay. It's really the gears that you need to change and, 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 and shift through to really understand who you are, where you're going, and how to get to where you want to go. Now, understand that these stages, they don't necessarily always happen in a chronological order. And you're going to see that on how I break this down dealing with the overall narrative what we're talking about which is the true path of the hero and for an example i'm gonna use a hero that most of us know who are into the anime spaces naruto now you can generally apply this to pretty much pretty much any uh character throughout the years that's you know the main character the protagonist you'll see a lot of these same story beats and a lot of us who are into um comic books, anime, and stuff like that, you'll start to see a lot of the same kind of tropes over and over with certain characters and kind of like this, the story of the hero, right? It's a very common thing, right? But it's also backed up by ancient teaching. See, there's nothing new under the sun. A lot of these guys up here who are creating these storyboards and, and character developments, they really come from a lot of, there are a lot of ancient traditions and metaphysical teachings that are passed down and that transcend even in today's most popular movies. Okay. The story of the hero. So what we're going to do is get into 
the seven stages of spiritual alchemy starting with of course the first stage the first stage is calcination so when we're dealing with calcination this is where you start to let go of egotism self-doubt and stubbornness all right now in the terms of naruto because that is what we're going with today see i'm gonna I'm give it to you in a way where it's going to be easy for you to digest it and you're going to be able to just be like oh wow that makes more sense right so in in the ways of naruto we all know that he basically was like a knucklehead of a kid and he grew up as they depict him somewhat of a loner he was kind of a hard head in class you know and he was ostracized because he had the tailed beast within him okay and just as a side note just to speak it you know speak over it the gentrikyo the tailed beast are really metaphors for your shadow self or your deeper inner what they would call demon or the part of you that you need to deal with in your life eventually or you'll be a slave to it either you're going to deal with it or it's going to deal with you and overcome you all right that's just a little metaphor for shadow self right gentriki so he had to kind of battle with why everybody kind of hates him as he was growing up, as he was coming up. And, you know, he, he developed a lot of childhood trauma. Of course, this is an anime, very typical. And, you know, as a, as a young fighter, his inner demons, if he couldn't control them, would, would get the best of him and take over, right? He had to learn how to control that inner energy. Now, he, as a ninja, he kind of lacked basic skills, though, because the other young ninjas would outclass him in certain ways because he didn't understand how to control and deal with his chakra. And a lot of his blockages came because of the Jinchiriki and him dealing with also his traumas on top of that. Now, what happened is, is that he eventually was trained by Jiraiya. For those of you who know that Jiraiya was realistically his first real teacher that he cared about. Jiraiya taught him how to do the Rasengan. Naruto's signature move, right? Passed down through his, his family, you know. And what he had to do in order to first grasp the concept of the Rasengan is that he gave him the water balloon. And he told him, he said, you're going to have to learn how to manipulate the water within the balloon, spin it around, right? Rotate the water in the balloon teaching him how to hone in that extra beast inside of him, that extra chakra, right? But he had to do other things before he could even get there. Remember, he had to dry, taught him how to walk on water. He taught him how to run up the tree. He taught him all different things, okay? So he had to really focus on himself. He had to let go of that inner ego, okay? That inner self-doubt or the egotism that was driving him to feel like uh, he needed to get somewhat revenge. And the way that was kind of lashing out is as, you know, he was, like I said, he was hard headed, he was stubborn, you know, and that was a result of really how he was being treated. But at the same time, those are things he had to kind of let go of so he could grow. All right. So that's, that's what we see when we see calcination, that's an easy way to explain calcination, right? Next we deal with dissolution, okay? So in this phase, we deal with the lack of responsibility, avoidance of traumatizing memories, and other inner resistance elements are brought forth for purification. So now you're starting to deal with those traumas and things that you've had in your past. Now you're starting to, to, to have to Deal with that inner demon in order to overcome so you can reach the next level. Okay. This is you having to, to, to accept what happened to you to a degree, right? You have to kind of deal with the trauma. You have to, I have a saying where, you know, and many people have heard this, you don't overcome your demons. You learn to live with them, right? You learn to live with your so-called quote unquote demons to where it will, because it's a part of you, it's a part of you. And this is the burden that you bear of 
over overcoming or we can say the blockage that you need to overcome in order to reach the next level. I like to outline this in this context as Sasuke versus Itachi because Sasuke knew the legend of his brother. Obviously, you know, growing up in the village, he looked up to his brother a lot until the night that he found Itachi uh, really killing his whole village, including his parents. And it left him just traumatized. He didn't know how to deal with it. He just built this callus of, I need to destroy this man. I need to become stronger so I can destroy my brother, basically. You know, as a young man, that was his early motivation was I need to kill Atachi. That was his whole thing. But that was also trauma. See, that was a trauma that he was fighting against to a degree. Basically saying, I'm nothing like him. You know, he's despicable. He's horrible. Um, you know, but Sasuke got to the point to where he had to accept his brother. Because if you remember in the showdown when they had to fight, now the first time he he, he kicked his ass, <laughs> you know, uh, he jacked him up against the wall. He basically told him, he said, you don't hate enough. He's like, you're, you're nowhere near the level you think you are to deal with me. Now, as he eventually got older and got his skills up, he was able to stand toe to toe with his brother because all that time Sasuke mentality was, I need to kill you. I need to kill you. I need to destroy you. And when he actually got to the point to where he, some would say, beat Itachi. Itachi left him with really love for his younger brother and basically said that I am the same brother you've always known. You know, you have to understand me on a different level to actually understand what happened. He had to change Sasuke's energy. Sasuke essentially had to change his energy and understand his brother on a different level. And once Sasuke was able to do that, what was he able to do? He was able to move on to the next phase. He was able to accept himself as a Uchiha. Okay. He was able to embrace the Uchiha name. All right. Um, and become even stronger beyond. See what I mean? It, it allowed Sasuke to get through his childhood trauma of the things that happened with his brother. And then move on to become stronger than his brother. Okay. Next, we're going to deal with separation. This is the next stage, separation. Now, separation is, so what is authentic and true to you? What path have you chosen? Now, internally, separation. I like to think of separation as... When you separate from the pack, you separate from the group, you separate from the sheeple, you separate from the social norms, right? You, um, let me see, decide what way you want to go because that's where your passion is driving you. The only influence is between you and yourself, which as we know, if you've been following you, yourself, the imagination you can perceive I am Yahweh, the most high God, the true God within you, the Christos, all that good stuff, right? You chose and you choose the pathway. You decide which way you want to go. See, this is now as we're talking overall, this is the pathway of the hero. But remember, the hero chooses the pathway. You decide what you want to do. OK. There shouldn't be much outside influence to tell you on what pathway you need to go. If you are really relying on an exterior source to tell you which way you need to go in life, you're not going about it the right way because you're coming with the energy of force. Also, you're coming with the energy of uh, submissiveness. You're coming with the energy, I need to be told what to do, I need to be led. No. You need to stand up with your chest out, with your head up and say, I know what I want to do. And I'm willing to fight for it. That's how your mentality should be. You choose a pathway that you want to be on. And in this case, <clears throat> and excuse me, and in this case, Naruto chose. He wanted to be Hokage. He said, I will be Hokage someday. 
Okay. He said, I will be Hokage someday. And we could also look at the duality of this and then say that Sasuke ultimately chose to really just kind of be an outsider, but a powerful ninja nonetheless. See, his overall quest was power, right? But the separation part is when you make the internal decision and you decide to say, this is it. Now, as I told you before, the seven stages don't necessarily have to be chronological, but more or less you can kind of move them a little bit around depending on how they come to you in life. But usually you are at a certain stage in your life. You just may not be aware of it because you may find something's easier to do, but then have to go back and recognize, oh, this is where I need to work on this stage of it, right? Now, we'll get into conjunction, right? Conjunction is the acceptance and in, accept and integrate the parts of your authentic self. Now, honestly, this is the acceptance. This is accepting you. This is you accepting you as who you are. Now, this is choosing the path and then accepting the path, basically maintaining and staying on the path, right? Like I said, this is the faith portion, like we talked about last time, faith in I am, this this is it. This is the faith in I am. Now, a lot of people get to this point of conjunction, because remember, conjunction, you're conjuncting. You're at an impasse, conjunct. This is where a lot of people start to wane and move left or right, all right? This could be the, the break the you know this could be the breaking point for some people because they'll know which way they want to go, but then again they'll fall short of completely going into what they need to do to obtain it. They'll lose faith. They'll feel as though there's no hope. As long as you maintain faith in the path, you will always get there. See? This is what this gets into. As long as you maintain faith in the path, you will always get there. All right, and this can this connects directly with the laws that we've already talked about, about uh, talked about before. All right, maintain the faith in I am, dealing with the laws of the universe. Okay, this is it. This is spiritual alchemy. As I, as I'm speaking on before, this is mentalism. Okay, you accept yourself for who you are. Right. This is now as in reference to uh, Naruto. We can look at this a couple of different ways, but I want to point out Sasuke rejecting the curse mark and Orochimaru's teachings. All right. This is Sasuke basically essentially getting away from feeling like he needed to be under Orochimaru's tutelage. When he broke away and decided that he would rather do and become his own thing. Okay. Where. You know, because he, he gets beyond Itachi. But then he accepts himself as a Uchiha. Therefore, he's able to go higher with his Uchiha, his ocular powers. Okay. He accepts himself. He goes looking for the higher knowledge of the Uchiha. Because Uchiha is his bloodline. His given right. All right, that's the thing that Orochimaru wanted was to put himself in the Uchiha bloodline, basically. He wanted to use Sasuke. Sasuke said, not today. And then Sasuke accepted himself instead of relying and thinking he needed the tutelage or to essentially give himself to Orochimaru. Okay. He realized that he was great all by himself. What do I say? God all by himself. He went within. He went internal and accepted. Okay. He was able to unlock and then get into the power of Sasano. Stuff like that. The higher levels. The Mangekyo Shunigun. He was able to move higher in the levels of Shunigun. Okay. Because acceptance was the key thing that he was able to do. Conjunction. See, That's how we use that. Again, that is conjunction. Very powerful. Now, we get into fermentation, which is the next thing. 
Now, fermentation is we deepen our connection to the inner voice, maybe through a dark night of the soul, building a further relationship to the infinite world within. Okay. Fermentation. Fermentation is a pretty deep one. Fermentation is more or less where it talks, you kind of get into the point where now you're kind of being tested. You've accepted it. You're going through it. You, you accept who you are. Now you're somewhat being tested. Talks about the dark night of the soul. You're going through the challenges that are going to help you build an even stronger connection. The universe is giving you this on purpose so it can help you become stronger. I mean, obviously in life, it's very easy. We'll go through things that we'll feel like is the end. We'll go through a breakup. We'll go through uh, divorces. We'll go through traumatic experiences. Not understanding why is this happening to me? It's happening so you can become stronger. You need to deal with and overcome your shadow self so you can become stronger. And it furthers that relationship to the internal voice within. Okay? It, it strengthens that internal voice within. It allows you to trust the self even more when you've tested the self and you've overcome. Okay? So, Naruto had to accept Kurama. Naruto had to stop rejecting what he was bound and tied to. It wasn't his fault he was tied to Kurama. He didn't decide to have the nine-tailed seal within him. We don't decide to go through the traumatic experiences that happen in our life. But it's not about our decisions and, and, and telling ourselves when we will go through trauma. It's about when trauma happens, what is our reaction to it? We're in control of our reactions in this world. And a lot of people get out of mind and out of body and out of sorts and out of balance when they want to try to control exterior situations. Like, why won't she listen to me? Why can't I tell her what to do? You know, uh, how come uh, this person does this? It doesn't matter. It's your reaction to it. You can decide to allow a certain thing or person to get a hold of your energy. Oh, I want to I want to say something back to them or no, I'm going to get revenge. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. As long as you're under the mindset and the energy of revenge, you are under their power. Because now they're making you dance. You know. You're under their power. They have control because you're not in control. So they are. I mean, as humans, we're very susceptible to be under under the control of different influences when we're not in control. If we're not in control, something or someone else is. But like I said, Naruto had to accept Kurama. And he also had to accept the death of Jiraiya. That was a big deal for Naruto because that was one of his closest, most impactful teachers. He had to accept the death of Jiraiya. And then when he did that, he was able to unlock and harness Sage Mode. He was able to get Sage Mode. So now we're talking Sage Mode, Naruto. See, something that even deeper happened. Because we're looking at accepting the power of the Nine Tails. He, he even, he added to that Sage Mode. He can tap into Sage Mode now. Because even going deeper within, not giving up when he was tested. Right? When Jiraiya passed away, he was still able to overcome and continue his training sage mode. And then he was he was able to go on and then battle with pain. So distillation. It's a very interesting one. Is integrating the inner real realizations into our lives in order to allow them to become permanent. The feeling of love and flow in all things. Now, for me, distillation, I like to kind of call it the king state. And you'll see why I'll call it the king state in a minute. I call it the king state because it's like you're pretty much at the top of the mountain, right? You're, you, you're, you're all the things that you've done and that you've built on and that you've put together and that you've worked on. You're basically pretty much at the top. The hero is pretty much, he, he's won the battle for the most part. And... You know, you could, 
I wouldn't recommend it, but you wouldn't want to stop at distillation. But some people kind of feel like the battle is won and everything is over. But at distillation is where you really start to get into the king state. You know, um, you make everything that you've done before permanent. You say you've, you've built acceptance into all the things before. You accept the journey, you accepted who you are, you accepted the teachings. Now you're starting to see the, the, how everything was able to work in your favor. Okay. You're starting to see the manifestations. You're starting to slowly obtain what it is that you want. You're starting to see the wealth. It's not necessarily done, but you're starting to see it. It's starting to come into play. You're starting to live it and experience it now. Because remember, you're supposed to already know it to be done now. But now it's starting to reflect itself in the physical world. Okay. It started to reflect itself. And now you feel this balance. You feel this inner peace. You walk the way of, of high discernment. Okay. You walk the way of, I got this. You don't doubt yourself. You're not doubting yourself. You're moving through life easy. We call it being in flow. Now you're more in flow. You can kind of go into flow at will, or you know the things that you need to do to get in flow. And you know how to stay there because when you're in flow, you're able to tap into your true source because your true source of power comes to you when you're in flow. And I'll talk more about how to get in and how to stay in flow at another time, but basically it's about staying in flow. All right. But yeah, like I said, you feel like you're the king. All right. Now, this is where basically Naruto becomes Hokage. He's at the top of the mountain. He's essentially won. You know, he's got it and he's pretty much done it all. Um, he's happy, family and everything. But. As we all know, there is a higher level. Because it was still coming, but there was still more work yet for him to do. OK. Now. The next thing that we're going to look at, which is the next step, this is coagulation. Oh, yes, coagulation. I like to call coagulation the God state. If distillation is the king state, coagulation is the God state, right? So coagulation is one with the divine inner world and outer world are not different but reflections of each other as one. Let me read that again. Coagulation is you are one with the divine inner world and outer world. They are not different, but reflections of each other as one, AKA the all you are connected. You're going on an even higher level at this point of coagulation. And it's full acceptance. Okay. It is you manifest and you don't, have doubt, you know, what's coming. You see it is done. It's a, it's a, it's a slight movement higher above the King state distillation. You're, you're even now in a, in a, in a higher ascended level. All right. This is essentially the realm of like the ascended masters, All right? The things that they would teach about inner peace. And now you just, you walk it, it exudes it from your being. People see you and they just, they know, yeah, that, that person is balanced. You know, um, if you want to look at it from, uh, you know, a different perspective, you could say a walking Christos energy, right? You walk around just with that, 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 that God energy on you. People can feel it. They, they, they get near you. They want to be near you because you just got that untouchable feeling about you. Like, man, everything this dude wants to do, he just does it. Everything this dude wants to make happen, man, he just gets on it. It's like this dude has no restraint, man. He doesn't. There's no restraint. One, because he's tapped in. One, he's tuned into the universe. He's understanding. Also, he has no fear, no doubt, no guilt, no shame. All right? It's one of my one of our most solid foundations and pillars of manifestation. There's no doubt, no fear, no guilt, no shame. Um, And, of course, I'd say the most obvious way to look at this from the perspective of Naruto would be when he was able to tap into six pass mode 
So not only does he have full acceptance of Karama, him and Karama are buddies. Him and Karama are one, right? He, he that's he can't be separated from the Fox Demon because he is the Fox Demon. They are one. There's when he goes into the the six pass mode or when he goes into Karama mode, they become one as a flame. And the in in the the difference between the two of them begins to merge into one being. Okay. You, you begin to see traces of Kurama in Naruto when he's in that mode and he's just like fire everywhere. All right. And he starts to have the traits of Kurama show up on him in the physical form. All right. That's full acceptance as the two becoming one. The two becoming one, even in the biblical sense, represents you becoming one with your higher self. People think it's, oh, I need to become one with this wife and this marriage and this person, this, this other you know, it's, you know, from a husband perspective, you know, I need to become one with my wife. And, and no, 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 kill that. No, it's not it. Kill that. It's about you becoming one with you and becoming a higher being. Okay. It's never about becoming a slave to somebody else or worshiping another person. Or feeling that you're indebted to have to do so. But this is where Naruto was able to achieve the six pass mode. All right, he, he met with Hagaramo. If you remember, he met with uh, Hagaramo. Hagar, Hagaramo, I'm probably saying the name wrong. But if we get into where he met with the quote unquote God of Ninja, when they met, let's go ahead and bring it up here. Him and Sasuke were both, were kind of meeting him simultaneously, right? They were both meeting him simultaneously. And he was asking him, you know, how do you see this ending? What do you want to do with this? What do you want to have happen? Naruto basically wanted to end the war. He wanted peace. Now, actually, him and Sasuke kind of both, both wanted peace. But Sasuke had his different way of going about it. And I'm actually kind of tell you how he somewhat failed. But, of course, Naruto wanted to bring it into the war. His pathway was more benevolent. As far as how he was going about it, he had a stronger energy of will of love and the things he wanted to do with, you know, uh, his will was stronger basically than Sasuke's because Sasuke wanted to bring destruction. He still kind of wanted to bring destruction to the ninja world, but he's, his outcome was the same or he wanted the same outcome as Naruto. He just wanted to go about a different way. Well, just to speak on it quickly, Naruto's will was stronger. Therefore, Sasuke was like, you know what? I don't even have to really continue this because me and your, at the end of the day, me and your goals line up. I can technically achieve the same outcome and I don't have to destroy everything. Right. And that speaks very truly to our pathways in life. Like I said, as long as you stay on the path, as long as you stay faithful in the path and you believe it, You'll get there eventually. You can move about it in what you would consider a benevolent way, or you could destroy half the world on your way there. But as long as you have the overarching mentality that this is the outcome I want, you can make it painful or you can make it enjoyable. And that at the end of the day, choice is yours. See, You make the choice to decide how you want to go about it making that outcome okay you decide how you want to go into creating the lifestyle that you want by just doing that right there because i like to outline the whole naruto and sasuke narrative just because it's very very almost like poetic but it's so so metaphysical if you really understand what's going on between the two characters all right you can literally say it's naruto and sasuke are kind of the same character existing in one universe at the same time you know they're they're basically the same or two different characters existing in the same universe at one time right but they they're essentially the same person that just decided a different pathway right because the story of naruto could somewhat be switched around with the story of sasuke they could switch stories but they literally took two protagonists and put them in the same universe and said, let's see how this goes. Sasuke chose a bit more of a darker path, but at the end of the day, he ultimately decided that there was no need for him to continue going about it his way because him and Naruto literally merged at the top as far as minds go. 
And that's why if you know at the end of their great battle, the last one that they had when they blew each other's arms off, they kind of had that little like they were shaking hands in blood, you know, situation. But it was also kind of to represent the union between Naruto and Sasuke that, you know, they're literally two sides of the same coin. You know, they're diametrically opposed, but they're also at the same time pretty much one, right? And it helps you draw that understanding of pathways in life. But as long as you maintain the focus, you'll get there. Pretty much every shonen, you know, like superhero, you know, comic book or whatever main story often outlines the same narrative. It's the same story being taught to you over and over and over, guys. It's like, seriously, there's nothing new under the sun. Same story is teaching you are, are you're being taught over and over for a reason. All right, for a reason. There's a lot of truth in the understanding of the metaphysical, guys. So yeah, guys, that's it. I just wanted to go over this, you know, and, and help you have a better understanding of the you know seven spiritual stages of alchemy. Um, I mean, this is just when you really start to get into the metaphysics, guys. It really is, man. Just, just a great way to understand the pathways and how to move in life. I mean. You know the ancient ancestors taught these things you know back in ancient times this is what was being taught in the ancient mystery schools this is what our ancestors were teaching okay the ancient egyptian knew these things and they taught this in a way to where they slowed it down over i think it's like a 40 year period <laughs> honestly of where you were in the mystery schools learning but everybody wasn't accepted into the mystery schools. Everybody wasn't accepted and everybody wasn't ready for this type of knowledge. But if you really stick with these teachers and understand these guys it really can help you overcome things and lead to, you know, breakthroughs and higher levels of understanding and higher levels of learning in life, guys. All right. So, guys, uh, I want to thank you for being here. Uh, thanks for your time. Uh, drop a like, comment, subscribe, do all those nice things up under the video, and I will see you on another one. Thanks, guys.